uh, good afternoon, uh, Professor Hirsch. Uh, uh, you are the uh, uh, from the Graduate School of Deve Development Policy and Practice at the University of Cape Town in South Africa, and you join us today at ECGPM, where we are discussing thinking and working politically. Uh, now, this is a concept very much driven by development practitioners in the north. Uh, but what is the relevance for development practitioners uh, in the South and for your work generally? Well, Africa, <coughs> many African countries are, are very complex. Um, a lot of them now are democracies um, in form, um, but they're, they're very often societies which are very diffuse, so there's no very strong center of power. In a few countries like Ethiopia or Rwanda, there's a sort of strong authoritarian, often benevolent authoritarian government, but in most African countries it's a, a fairly diffuse uh, democratic system. So in order to actually make things happen, you have to understand how the system works, where the decisions are made, who the people are who are likely to support the decision uh, going forward, um, where the potential blockages are going to come from and how to neutralize those blockages, and how you build coalitions progressive coalitions to, to reform. It's, it's not a simple matter of making a decision or publishing a policy document. They're very good pol policy documents or theoretically uh, very good po policy documents in many African countries, but it's hard to implement decisions, so you have to think politically if you're going to implement decisions effectively. Good, excellent, thank you. Now, of course, you have some uh, prior experience in both policy and practice as a senior economic advisor to uh, three presidents in South Africa. And of course, uh, with exposure to the BRICS and the G20. And of course, now you've moved to the graduate school. Uh, why this move and what are you trying to achieve? Well, I, I, I'd spent quite a lot of time in government, about 19 years altogether. Gained a lot of experience and thought that at, at this time, you know, there are lots of opportunities in Africa to improve societies. Most African countries are growing quite quickly, uh, but many of them don't have the management skills at the leadership level in the public sector to achieve those objectives. So um, I discussed it with um, various people, including the, the president at the time and, and, and others, and they agreed that it would be a good project to establish um, to do something that would support the strengthening of leadership in African countries so that we can use this opportunity of relatively rapid growth to build stronger foundations for sustainable development. Um, now, your school has a striking mission, uh, and I believe uh, one, one of the taglines is uh, Esprit du Corps, uh, uh, amongst uh, which you'd like to promote amongst government leaders in South Africa and in Africa more broadly. Um, what do you mean by this uh, uh, Esprit du Corps, and uh, why this focus? Well, very often African leaders believe they have to learn from other parts of the world. So they travel to Singapore, or they travel to Korea, or they come to here to the Netherlands, or they go to the UK. Um, in fact, there's a lot that Africans can learn from each other. In, in different African countries, um, significant achievements have, have been made. And in some countries, the public service is, is quite strategic and quite confident and um, so we find that when we bring African um, public sector managers at a senior level together, they have a lot to offer each other. So we want to, we want to strengthen those networks so that progressive-minded, dynamic African public officials are able to engage with each other, to solve problems together, to refer to each other when they've got something to address that they haven't encountered before. And we, we are building this network now. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and, uh, of course, some of our colleagues here at ECGPM are currently working on projects regarding uh, the political economy of regional integration. Um, so I was wondering if you could give me an example of an approach to this uh, political economy uh, and what type of experiences the EU has found to be, have proved particularly relevant for people studying this topic. Well, the question, uh, politi the uh, so African economic integration was put on the agenda very strongly in the early 60s by people like uh, President Nkrumah from, from Ghana, mm -hmm. the, f the first leader of the OAU. And um, it's pretty obvious that Africa is comprised of a lot of relatively small countries that could gain a lot from um, breaking down trade barriers and other kinds of investment barriers, barriers to the movement of people, um, theoretically. But it's been very difficult to do that. 
because in, in many of these countries there are strong interests. They probably don't represent the majority. They might even represent a small minority, but who have something to lose from greater freedom of trade or greater freedom of movement of people and so on. So these blocking forces um, stand in the way. So the question is, how do you mobilize to neutralize the forces that are currently inhibiting uh, effective e uh, economic integration in Africa? Um, we think it's by broadening the involvement of civil society, the private sector, um, NGOs, the, um, the academic communities, journalists, parliamentarians, in the discussion about integration, that we shouldn't really leave it solely to the regional organizations and the political leaders.